If you are looking to get into the pen testing space, but you are brand new, uh, you're starting from zero, and this is an area that has been interesting to you. You've seen the uh, the articles that have come up online every week. You know, of this company getting hacked, that company getting hacked. You want to be a part of this space. You want to be a part of that sort of cutting edge uh, on the front lines with the offensive security angle of it with pen testing. Uh, but you don't really know where to start. This video is for you. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. I got a special video for you guys. It uh, re was requested on my channel recently, and, uh, you know, this is definitely uh, a core part of this channel, right? Uh, how can you elevate your skill set in security, even if that skill set is currently sitting at zero right now? Uh, because you can get to that level of where you are job ready uh, in a lot quicker than you think, really. Uh, but in this video, I really wanted to distill what are the things you need to know? Give you guys like, you know, like the video says, the roadmap uh, to landing your first job as a pen tester. And, uh, you know, if you're already in this space, this stuff is definitely, you probably know a lot of this stuff, but it's always good review as well. Uh, so yeah, if we get right into it, these are going to be in no particular order uh, because they're all, they're all things that are pretty core that you need to understand uh, if you want to be really marketable uh, as a pen tester. So you can learn these in whatever order you so choose. In the end, you're going to need to to have a decent grasp on all of them before you're really ready for a, a job in this space, I would say. And the first one that I want to touch on is networking. So with networking, I'm talking about, uh, you know, like net, computer networks, uh, not to be confused with, uh, you know, the social skills, <laughs> Uh, that certainly helps too, right? If you can go to a, a, a career fair or something and you, know, you got the you got the golden mouthpiece, you can talk to people, that's good too. But what I'm talking about is stuff like, you know, TCP IP, understanding, you know, how that protocol works. It's essential to understanding like the internet and, uh, and all of that, you know? And then additionally, uh, I would definitely say that uh, subnetting, and not, you don't have to go super crazy with it. You just need to understand, you know, some basic stuff like, you know, your basic like CIDR notation, uh, you know, look that one up uh, and, you know, understanding how to, you know, how many, how many uh, based off of like a, uh, you know, your subnet, how many addresses do you have, you know, excluding your, your broadcast address, excluding your, um, you, you know, the, those first two, right? Excluding those, how much, uh, are you, you, your multicast, your unicast address, right? How many IP addresses do you have for new nodes on your network, right? And that's what subnetting is going to be about. And, and that's, and the reason you need to understand this is so that, uh, when you're on pen tests and things like that, you'll know, um, what IP addresses are in scope, like what is part of what network, right? You really need to know that information. And, uh, you know, definitely understand IPv4. That, that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, TCP IP. I'll put it here, right? Understand IPv4. But uh, optionally, I would say optionally, IPv6. That's the, that's the new hot thing. But this is optional. You don't need to to know it uh, in order to land a job in this space. IPv4 is still the dominant one in the internet. But moving forward, they keep saying we're going to IPv6. Uh, there's some hack the box stuff that uh, uses IPv6. Good place to get started with uh, with that as well. Uh, you can watch some videos online, YouTube, and stuff, of course. But uh, that's what I would say for networking. Now the next big thing is you need to learn Linux. You need to learn how to use the, uh, the, the terminal, right? Like the terminal commands, I guess we'd say, right? Uh, that, that's, that's going to be one of the, one of the biggest things, but then just understand the operating system in, in, in general, right? Like, 
in addition to just knowing the commands, know like the the structure of the of the operating system, right? With Windows, you're probably familiar with like your C drive, you know, like uh, certain folders in there, like Windows um, users and and documents and downloads and all that, right? Understand the uh, the file structure of a Linux system, like a uh, user and bin and boot and lib and and proc and all that stuff, right? Like understand just generally how that is uh, all structured because you're going to spend a lot of time. Uh, if you're not using a Linux system as your pen test box, uh, you're going to be pen testing a lot of Linux servers, right? So you're going to need to know these things, especially if you can get a shell on a box and you need to go a step further. As a pen tester, normally that's not the case. Uh, but as a red teamer, most certainly, you're going to need to know how to navigate uh, from that point once you get the shell. But uh, I would say, you know, and, and some basic basic bash scripting. And don't be too intimidated by that. We've covered bash scripting on this channel before. When I talk about that, basically what we're saying is we're talking about just running terminal commands, but putting them in a flat file and having that file run those commands. So if you know how to do this, then learning how to do this is pretty pretty much the same thing, not much different. So uh, you can watch some of my videos that I previously did uh, if you need some help with that. But uh, moving on from here, I would definitely say if you want to be a pen tester, definitely learn OWASP top 10, all right? And uh, we're going to take a look at that right now, actually. Because it covers a lot, the, the top 10. This is going to really help you uh, be able to pen test these web apps, okay? And uh, as a pen tester, you're going to be most likely pen testing a lot of web apps. Um, now, if you're strictly a network pen tester. Um, maybe you don't need this, but uh, most pen testing jobs are going to involve web apps. So, uh, you know, injection is number one on this list and uh, it really encompasses quite a lot. So anything that involves injection, right? Could be SQL injection, uh, NoSQL, which is uh, for the, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, your, uh, your like the unstructured data uh, databases like um, I'm trying to think what it's called like Hadoop and stuff like that uh, you know OS injection right LDAP like even cross-site scripting and stuff would be a part of it although they didn't put it in here uh, that's still like a injection they, they put it as a separate thing here but a lot of times you know basically if you can inject cross-site scripting into a page like maybe like stored cross-site scripting or something like that Basically, anything that is not being properly, like, sanitized and, you know, it's being executed as code or whatever when it shouldn't be. And then broken authentication. I'm not going to cover the full top 10 right here, but you can kind of see. Um, learn these. And a great way to learn these and to actually get hands-on, because it's one thing to read this, right? And there's another thing to actually identify and exploit the vulnerability. That's when you want to use a vulnerable web app. Like, uh, I think one of the best ones right now that I'd recommend, I mean, you can Google vulnerable web apps, but a, a, a wasp juice shop, I believe is what it's called. Yeah. Download this one. This one seems to be pretty good. I heard really good things about this one. You just, uh, download this onto one of your VMs, you run it and then, yeah, then you can like practice exploiting all kinds of different Vulnerabilities. Certainly all these top 10 vulnerabilities should be on there, pretty much. And you can practice exploiting them and getting hands-on practice, which is, of course, the best practice they can get. So that is the next thing. Yeah, just, just learn the OS top 10. Get pretty comfortable with that. And then, I mean, once you've gotten to this point, you're already doing pretty well. I would say uh, Nmap. I'll put that in a category of its own. Learn Nmap, um, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll say recon and enumeration, right? 
learn that. So that will involve like you know understanding how to use Nmap, understanding how to, uh, you know use use Google right. Use Google to search for you know say you you use Nmap, you find like it's running this software this version, then use Google to. Um, or, you know, whatever you prefer, DuckDuckGo. Search engines, right? Use a search engine to search for uh, that particular version of that software to see if there's any known vulnerabilities, right? You know, it could be search exploit even to find that. Just learn how to, how to, good, how to do really solid recon enumeration. Maybe you have your own custom uh, scripts that run through a bunch of different Nmap checks. Um, using the Nmap scripting engine and stuff. Whatever it is, learn how to do your recon and enumeration um, pretty solidly here as a separate thing, right? And then beyond that, and, and you know, it might seem like like a lot, but just, uh, just chip away at this stuff, you know, just little by little. That's how you're going to learn. And uh, once you've gotten to this point, um, the only other thing I would say, learn some network uh, vul vulnerabilities, I would say. Not really, don't learn network vulnerabilities. Le learn, like, network exploitation, maybe I should say, right? So what do I mean by this? Learn, uh, okay, uh, let, me, let me just run back really quick here. Along with the recon enumeration, learn common ports, I glossed over this one. Learn common ports. So so you need to know with Nmap, right? I guess that's kind of part of Nmap, right? Learn the common ports. So like when you when you run your Nmap command and you see, oh, four four five is running, you need to know that that's SMB, right? Twenty five is running, right? That's the email one, SMTP, right? You need to you need to be able to know these things off the top of your head. And that'll kinda of come with time, but yeah, that's definitely something you need to go out of your way a little bit in the beginning to to learn. 443, that's uh, HTTPS, you know, just knowing that kind of stuff is really important. And like uh, 3389 is RDP. But anyhow, you get the idea. Uh, network exploitation, like, you know, knowing like the, the protocols. It kind of goes back to what I'm saying, like those different ports. But certain protocols are going to be vulnerable uh, typically to certain exploits traditionally, you know? And so when you see a open port, a certain port, you'll you'll know like, okay, well, traditionally, you know, th this has been vulnerable to this or this, so I'm going to run these checks on it, right? Just understanding, or like this is just a straight-up vulnerable protocol, right? Like one example of that is Telnet. Oh, they're running Telnet. This is an unencrypted uh, administrative port, right? Basically like FTP, but not encrypted. So this is something that I can report on a pen test. All right, simple as that. And the very final part of the roadmap, I would say, is reporting. Learn, like, learn how to write a report. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people won't cover this, but it's important, you know. Learn how to write pen test reports. Go online and, and see if you can find some sample reports if, if you're completely lost. Um... You know, OSCP covers how to write them as well, I believe. Uh, but if you're not enrolled in anything like that, yeah, just just look online. You'll, you'll be able to find some sample ones, I'm sure. And uh, the, the, the basic idea of it is, like, you normally have, like, your impact where you convey, like, what is the impact of this vulnerability? And then maybe you have some reproduction steps so that uh, the the, uh, the app team or the, the network guys or whoever you need to communicate back to can understand how the vulnerability was found and how it was produced and then have like your sort of remediation section where you give uh, detailed information on how they can uh, remediate the vulnerability, right? And and you have some screenshots on the way. It's kind of illustrating what's going on, making it easy to follow. Uh, that's basically like your structure to how you report a vulnerability. But uh, once you have all of these things here, Honestly, once you have all these things down, and you don't have to be a master expert at all of them, but as long as you have like a, a decent foundation, this is like your foundation here. Once you have this down, 
Then you just do uh, do CTFs. You know, get hands-on experience. And then once you once you do all like once once you like start doing CTFs and you have all this stuff down, that's when you're you're you'll be ready to uh, apply for a job. And when you're in the interview, don't don't sh- like shortchange yourself. Make sure you let them know like. You spent time doing these things. Like you spent time, you know, pen testing vulnerable web apps and learning OS to, OWASP top ten, and you know you've done all these things. Now there's you know there's a Japanese proverb that I really like, and it says something to the effect of uh, even grains of sand can become a mountain, and that's what one thing you got to understand, right? You know, it's not it, there's it's a it's a tall mountain to climb, right? It's gonna take a lot of grains of sand to build your mountain. But uh, but one grain at a time, and and you know over time you will be able to to acquire these skills. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be intimidated by this. This stuff is not. I mean, it can be hard, but it's not hard to learn this. Okay, anyone can anyone can learn this for sure. It just takes time, right? It just takes time. <clears throat> you know, I've been doing this for a while. You know, a lot of the people that have they're in this space, they've been doing this stuff for a while. So if you're brand new to it, you know. It's the hardest it'll ever be. Today is the hardest day you'll ever have on this stuff because over time, you start learning what networking is. You start learning what Linux is and, you know, OS Top 10, Recon, networking, uh, network exploitation, reporting, whatever, right? You start learning this stuff and uh, it all kind of stacks on top of each other. None of the knowledge you acquire exists in a vacuum. So just remember that and... uh, yeah, once you get to this point, you are good to start applying for jobs. Really get out there on LinkedIn. Get get this stuff on your resume. Uh, we'll cover more resume stuff in a future video. But uh, yeah, I hope this video helped you guys. And it was a little bit lengthy, but I think uh, it was definitely chock full of information. Uh, yeah, but be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button so we can help get this message out there uh, to the people that need it. And I will see you guys in the next video.